Welcome to my backyard. My name's Joe and this is my backyard and we're gonna do a little cookout, right? I've got some hot dogs on the grill and the time it takes for me to finish up these hot dogs, which, you know, doesn't take very long on a, on a warm grill, we're gonna do something in Camtasia that we can put into practice in our everyday video making. And that is we're gonna learn how to do some motion graphics. So I was on a walk today with my family, saw a sewer uh, gate that um, looked pretty cool. I guess you'd call it like a sewer lid. I'm not sure what the technical term for that is. Um, it was a really, really well done, well crafted piece of metal. And it uh, got me thinking about uh, bank vaults, right? And one of the intros you see a lot in cinema is uh, these sort of vaults opening, like Mystery Science Theater has done a little riff on this, but I, I'm thinking of the X-Men movies, there's these series of doors that open. So we're gonna start our video by, we're gonna create a really cool intro that looks like a, a vault, you know, opening into the, the store of knowledge, right? So all I'm gonna do is start by just drawing some things in Camtasia. So first thing I wanna do is make sure my project is set at 4K. If you're working with motion graphics, it's a must that you do things at 4K so that you keep things nice and crisp. And I'm gonna go over to the bold shape pack. And I'm gonna start by just dragging and dropping uh, some shapes. In this case, I have a nice uh, shape for my background and it needs to look metal. So I'm gonna grab the fill style here and I'm gonna bring it down into the grays, but you know, that's kind of a dead looking uh, gray. So I wanna bring in some blues and this is sort of a trick you can use when you wanna make things look metal. And I'm gonna select gradient. You can see I have a nice gradient effect. Just by selecting that drop list, I can change it from solid to gradient. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and make a door. And so our door here is gonna be a, like, a, like a bank vault. So it should look like um, a circle. So I'm gonna grab one bring it to the center. An easy way to do this is to drag it to the timeline if you want to make sure that it's centered. Drag it to the timeline and we will automatically center it for you. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and make this, uh, let's make this 2000 pixels large and let's go ahead and do the same treatment. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab one of these darker metal colors around here and then I'm going to say gradient. So you can see it's, it's already looking like uh, two pieces of things that have a light, a unique light source and are slightly different. Um, uh, it's one slightly closer than the other, or one has more of a light above it. But we wanna go ahead and make it look more, uh, give it more depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and group that, and I'm gonna rename it, uh, let's call this the door outline. The reason I'm gonna call it the door outline is because I'm gonna copy, and I'm gonna paste that, and I'm gonna call this the uh, door body. Now they look the same to you, right? But when I group a gradient, it allows me to rotate the gradient in Camtasia. It's one of our, uh, so I'd call this sort of a Camtasia hack. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Z rotation and I'm gonna say 180. Now you can see I've rotated that gradient. And if I bring the size down to say 1850, and just like that, I get this really cool embossed effect. You can start to play with opacity if you want it to be more or less subtle. And in this case, I kind of I kind of like it a bit subtle, um, but I'll, I'll bring this down and, and maybe I'll even, ah, I think I'll keep the outline at full opacity. Okay, so I have those two things going. Now I want to go ahead and make a wheel because you have to open a door, right? So I'm um, first, well, I better rename this group and call this the door. Now I need to make a wheel. So again, I'm just going to bring down this nice annotation and I'm going to go ahead and scoot over and make this, um, let's call this, um, yeah, let's make it 600 pixels large. Zoom in and let's go ahead and remove the fill, but we want to add a stroke to it. And so we just need to add a handle, right? Now I'm going to add some crossbars. So let's go ahead and add a crossbar to the center. The benefit of, of you know, sort of doing this also that like the main objects are in the center is you get these nice little center snap lines. And that's a little too wide. Maybe it about so we'll call that good and again because those hot dogs are starting to look pretty pretty yummy so okay so if I go ahead and group these three things I get uh, one object and I'm gonna call this the wheel and let's go ahead and rotate that um, 45 degrees Okay, and zoom back out. You can see we already have a pretty nice look. All right, but we want to go ahead and give it a little bit more of a metal-y look, right? So a couple ways we can go about doing that. In this case, though, I think what we'll do is, um, is let's add, uh, let's just change the annotation color 
actually, you know what, I want to, since they're slightly different, one is a, an outline, so I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's see about, yeah, that's a little too light, or a little too middle, let's maybe grab that light, and then these are fills, so I can grab somewhere, maybe a maybe slightly darker, just to give it a little bit of depth, right? Okay, so that, that's looking okay. I don't think it's looking just just great yet. Now, what I could do is go back out to this main timeline and, and move this up to track four, and I could actually bring in one of these gradients from another layer, and this could create a, a pretty cool effect. So let's take this bottom shape, just paste it in there, and I'm gonna use this as a track mat. So I go to track four, I right-click on the eyeball, and I say alpha. And now you can see I'm getting a bit of that uh, fall off. Now, if I want to get more of that fall off to come in here, I can just start to resize that tr that uh, object on track three. You can see I get a pretty cool effect. And now I'm just going to group those two things. I'm going to turn the track mat off track four, and I'm going to rename this uh, as um, wheel with fill. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, the first thing is we're going to have this uh, rotate. Um, that's going to be our animation, but I do want to um, take a moment to get this to ex uh, sort of protrude a little bit because a wheel would be closer to me than the door. So I want to use a drop shadow to sell that. So I'm going to go over to the visual effects and you can see I've already made a vault wheel drop shadow effect and it's pretty, pretty straightforward. If I go down, um, you can see that I get this nice, this nice little fall off. And uh, if I go ahead and stretch it out, you can see I can make it look, you know, I can make it look like it's really floating in space there, but it does need to still look connected to the, to the vault. So you don't want it to be too, too far away on an offset. You don't want it to be too blurry either because it's not that far away. It's, it's relatively close to the vault door, right? So if I bring it back out, you see this is looking okay. In fact, I might just bring that vault uh, offset down just a bit and if you wanted to you could also make a shape um, maybe I would add it underneath this whole thing or actually in this case I might even add it to the group itself um, is you could add like another shape in here that just looks like it's supposed to be a stem and so in this case I would take uh, underneath all of this and I would I would take this area this little shape down here and I would just color it like the, one of the darker colors. And, you know, you can start to make it look like you had a bit of a stem connecting, but honestly, I don't really want to go that route. I think we'll keep keep simple and let that work for us. Okay, so I have this, this nice little drop shout effect here, um, but, you know, I want to actually rotate this. And if I rotate, it, you'll notice, if I'm going to animate this, I can go ahead and just explore rotating now. You'll see that the drop shadow is, is sort of going with it. And, actually want the drop shadow to stay in place if possible right otherwise it looks like it's sort of oblong so what I think we could do to simplify this a bit for ourselves is is we could change the size of this group so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and resize the group to visible size okay so that's what we already have so let's resize the group we're gonna say a custom size so if I remember right let me go in I'm gonna just look at the size okay so about six if I go out to this, you can see I've got that wide gradient in there, and that's what's creating that, that larger size. So if I say rename group, um, in fact, that even gets me thinking that what we could do instead is let's go in and group, let's do the animation to this group right here, and I think we're going to get what we want. So if I go in and I say my first, my first movement is going to be uh, this wheel rotating and I'm gonna say it's gonna rotate um, I'll tell you what let's go ahead and just use the, the knob and let's have it rotate around until it looks like about where I would want it to go and if I just go ahead and pull it back you can see I get that nice centered rotation like we were hoping for and I get that shadow staying in the right position as it rotates uh, the other benefit is the light source stays consistent so if I deselect here you can actually see that this is rotating. Now I think I want it to rotate even more, so all I need to do is, is just keep cranking that wheel around until I get it 
to like that. Uh, that's a good spot. And it's probably going to go really fast. Yeah, it might even go too fast. So how about we, whoops, how about we stretch this out? And if I go back and hit spacebar, yeah, that's pretty nice. Let's try that again. Okay. So let's go ahead and now get the door open effect going. So if I have a door and I'm on the main timeline here, I'll go ahead and close that group. Um, I wanna go ahead and make sure that the door uh, has, a, has an opening, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this shape and we're gonna use it as a track mat. So I'm gonna go to my bottom layer here. I'm gonna go insert track above, copy, and then I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna line it all up here, and I'm gonna say alpha track mat. Now, in this case, I need to use alpha invert, right? So alpha invert. Now, if I hide the door, I will be left with just this negative shape. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and group these two things, and I'll call this, whoops, I accidentally hit magnetism, and I'm gonna, oh, I had the highlight on, okay. Um, so let's say, um, we'll just call this door, and we'll call this one, um, or mask, whoops, or mat rather, to stay true to uh, the terminology of Camtasia. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that wheel turn, and after it's done turning, we're gonna have the door push in and slide left, okay? So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna say spacebar, right? Think of the sound effects you use here. It stops. It's gonna push in and slide over. Now we could also have it pull out and slide over. Um, in this case, why not? Let's let's have it pull out and slide over. Let's let's try that. Okay. So I take this door and we'll just go ahead and drag the animation to about here. So if I if I wanted to be really precise, I could look at that inside group where that animation ends. But I'm not looking for super big precision here. Okay. Now. The door needs to enlarge, so I want to make sure I do, in fact, have the right shape. Now, in this case, I'm going to have the door enlarge just a little bit, so I'm going to say about, about the height of the canvas, okay? So the door is going to come out, Now I'm going to zoom in now, and I'm going to really reduce the time of that, okay? So it's going to happen pretty fast, so if I hit space, okay, so it happens pretty fast. In this case, I want to make sure my easing is set to exponential just to give it a little bit more life. Okay, now, oh, and there comes the sun too. I better rotate my hot dogs. All right, and let's go ahead and finish this baby up. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to add the door moving to the left. So then the door moves to the left to about here say yeah here and if I just scoot back you see I get this nice now as this door is opening I'm gonna be going in to start the uh, into the first uh, frame of my tutorial video or of my video right so let's go ahead and see how this looks all together spacebar I'd say that looks pretty cool let's try it again Okay, now all we need to do is, let's just group this all up. And we need to, first of all, just put something behind it. Whoop, let me get rid of my track mat that was left over from the group. Let's call this, um, let's rename this group as uh, do, uh, Door Intro. And we're gonna add uh, some media behind it. So in this case, I wanna go ahead and go to my library. And I have this really nice video shared from a good friend of mine, Mr. Troy Stein. And let's see, we want to position that video right as that frame opens is when I want the video to appear. So there is the frame opening. That's where the video will appear. Now you could add a marker to this too, and this is something I learned from Brooks, uh, Mr. Brooks Andrus, um, that I can add a marker and say, um, um, frame of content is really what you need to line up there and if I exit marker mode again one of the hidden areas of Camtasia that you can inadvertently get into um, so I added that marker 
and when I when I select that, you can see that little that little marker shape, and it also doubles as a bit of a snap there too. Um, so now I have that first frame of uh, my sunburst asset. If I go ahead and, and if I scoot back just a little bit, and now I have my asset loading into place. Now I have my source is so much smaller. I could just shrink down the whole thing, but for this example, I'm just going to enlarge. Uh, this source video so you guys can get a sense of just how how cool this all really looks so again I hit spacebar and the door opens and now what's left to push through right so the door opens and and this is the amount of space I have to actually push in so I'm gonna say the push in starts right here and so I go ahead and hit grab that animation and by the time it gets to this frame, I need to be all the way in. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale up to about, in this case, about 300%. And why not just say that? Wait, all right. Now, if I wanted to add some more effects, like I could add like an extra drop, drop shadow here. It'd look pretty cool. Might as well, since we're in here and we've almost finished our hot dogs. And so let's go ahead and um, add just a visual effect and say drop shadow. You can see I can just add that drop shadow to that group and, um, and offset, just make it, make it drop down and keep it vertical so the light source is consistent. And let's see, bring down the blur, just ever so subtle, right? And maybe increase, eh, we'll decrease opacity. Okay, so added a little bit more depth. In fact, I might even, I might even feel like yeah, no, I don't like the blur a lot. So, so let's just keep it like that and we'll just increase opacity a bit. Okay, so if I go ahead and hit spacebar, and there we go on that. And so let's see it all together at the very end with me now. Let's, let's watch our masterpiece together. and the sun will rise. And I hope that uh, you guys all enjoyed this. Try, your, uh, try, it, try it out, experiment. You know, all of this was done um, really impromptu and uh, with very little planning. So you can have a lot of fun with Camtasia if you just explore. And the more you explore, the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. And of course, um, as you do try things, just don't be afraid to fail because you'll have a lot of false starts. But uh, you know, hey, we're in the backyard cooking hot dogs and uh, making some motion graphics. Let's get together again and do this. And if you have any questions, please feel to leave a comment. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the description for the link to this project. And uh, let's go ahead and make more motion graphics. Let's go, enjoy.